John Review Board meeting and for March 2nd, 2021. Um, I'd just like to make some comments to anyone that is uh, either dialing in or on Zoom. Um, if you're attending virtual, uh, vir uh, virtually via Zoom, there's a few guidelines I'd like to mention. Everyone is muted. Your videos are turned off by default to minimize any disruptions. If you'd like to make a comment during the public hearing portions of this meeting, please raise your hand by clicking on the icon lab labeled participants at the bottom of your screen, and then click the button labeled raise hand. If you're calling into the meeting on a phone, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine on your keypad. Once the moderator calls your name, please unmute yourself by clicking on the microphone button on the bottom of your screen or by pressing star six on your phone. So I'd like to call the meeting to order, and uh, the first item is for all of us to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, public for which it stands, nation under liberty and justice for all. I'd like to first introduce um, our staff members and our board members. I'd like to go from left. Hi, this is Shubha Jangam, senior planner at City of Milton. Lee Collins, West Britain Road. Charlie Roberts, Freemanville Road. Laura Weissong, Cricket Creek. Reed Casey, Bethany Road. All right. Our first item up is the approval of this, uh, this evening's agenda, and we do have a couple of modifications. Um, so if I could have someone make a motion, we need to add an item uh, on to courtesy reviews. It would be item, I believe, item C. I'll make a motion to add item C. And 5H. And 5H to the agenda tonight. I second. Oh. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Next item is to approve um, our January meeting minutes. If somebody could please make a motion. I make a motion to approve the January meeting minutes. February. No second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Our, our second portion of the meeting is to cover a series of demolitions uh, that we have for the agenda this evening. Our first uh, demolition item is 835 Mayfield Road. Mm, if, one second. If the... Um, if the applicant could come forward. Can I ask, have you got Jeff on Zoom? I've got him on my phone. Jeff, are you able to get in? Yeah, we have other member on Zoom. But not Jeff. We have Ms. Palmer on Zoom. Okay, but there not There is Jeff. no passcode required for Zoom. Jeff, are you here? Can you hear? I can hear, yeah. All right, Jeff. Um, is on Zoom seeing, and he's going to communicate through my phone, if that's okay. So, go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, if you could please state your name and address, and then tell us about the demolition. Sure, happy to do so. This is uh, Jefferson McConkey. I'm with JLM Investment Group. We are the owners of the property. We also, as you guys know, own 875 Mayfield down the street, which you guys will be hearing later in, in DRB for the uh, approval of the medical stuff down there. Um, we made application for demo of this property because of the um, future plan you know, use of what we're doing there. I know some staff here tonight has been privy to a meeting that we have about some of the things that are happening over there. We can't really kind of go into all that detail now, but given the brevity of what we've done down the street at 875 that you guys have seen and the things that we've done in the past, getting those permits kind of together for the demo stuff there and re reincorporating that stone and stuff to the development, we kind of visualize doing some of the things here 
on this site with the minor things that are still existing on this uh, site. There are a couple of little architectural details on some of the brackets and I think a couple of interesting windows that were once part of the structure, which are actually now gone. If you haven't been by there recently, the former owner basically took everything out of there and there's really nothing left in the house. So it's basically falling apart anyway. Um, we made application. Uh, I know that there's some sentimental stuff up here in the, in the, in the city and the surrounding properties. I've lived in Atlanta my whole life and have worked really, really hard to put together plans up here with you guys in Milton for both 875 and the things we're going to do down the street. Um, in the application, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. One thing I did want to do, we didn't have the ability to get this in to you guys ahead of time, but I had spoken to them earlier. I can put a couple things up here, and I'm happy to distribute this to you guys to look at it. I think this will work. Might have to help me with this. Yeah, he used to. It, it, he just, wait, just put it on. It's like it's an old-fashioned. Face, face up. Yeah, I mean, it's just like an old-fashioned projector. But, yeah. Oh, it just takes a second to come up. Okay, can you guys see this? Um, I'm happy to, like, go through this. I, I don't want to waste everybody's time. You guys got a really long agenda. I've been doing this for 26 years, so respect everybody else's here. I want to make sure I try to get this as... Can you get closer to the microphone? Sure. So I want to try yeah. to get this as quickly as possible for the benefit of everybody else is here. But I have my structural engineers that I worked with for many, many years come out and do a structural engineer analysis of the property. And this is the report. I'm going to share with you just a little bit on the actual cover letter. And then there are, we won't go through all these details, but I'm going to share it with you guys here. And I got copies um, that I'll distribute for you guys to consider. But uh, at the end of the day, this basically kind of goes in, talks about the different things that were done here. I'm going to kind of just push this up here so people can kind of read. Uh, if you want to take a second just to read this. It's only just, just this one page. You guys all see that on your monitors. Mm -hmm. I'll let you guys take a second to read that. I think you should submit that to staff so I it's will, in the record. But, for sure. Um, since none of us are structurals, I think right. the I, point is here's a letter and there's a lot, of, a lot of damage to the house. Right, Charlie, you're right. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this up so you can get to the little bit last part here. Um, on. There we go. So... At the appropriate time, I would like to ask Jeff, who's one of our board members. Absolutely. He's on Zoom tonight, but he's also president of the Historical Society. And I'd like to ask uh, if Jeff, would, Jeff, you there, and you take the lead on this. As we, is it appropriate to start your discussion? Yeah, I'm gonna let Madam you guys Chairman? finish reading this real quick. There, did everybody get to the bottom of this page? Mm -hmm. okay. And then yeah. just, the last page is just really just the part from the. Uh, Go up. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. You guys are so sophisticated up here in Milton. It's not like that in Buckhead. Anyway, this is just from the engineering company with their, with their stamp on I'll submit this into the record, and I'll, I'll spare you the details on the report because it's 37 pages, but it's got documented pictures of all the things that are just happening up there. It's, unfortunately, it's just a really bad situation, and it's virtually impossible to really do anything up there. But let me this. Thank you. Thank um, before um, Mr. Difference starts, can, um, Bob wanted me to, if you're done, Mr. McConkey. Sure, go ahead, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that the, the little uh, knee wall that is in front of the building as well, it goes all the way down uh, Mayfield or a, a good bit of it, um, is considered historic. And so when the sidewalk project was done and we received federal funds, they required that we preserve that and not dem demolish that knee wall. So just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of that as well. And, and that's, a, that's a good point. When the application was made by my engineer, I think that was put on the application for that wall. Is that correct? For the, your for, for engineer's... The application. I don't, think we, I don't think we actually had that on there, but anything in that regard in terms of what would be developed, we certainly would obviously work with you guys in some kind of memorandum of understanding or whatever, how that would work in terms of, you know, incorporating that into some future development. And anything else that we would do, just kind of similar to what we did down the street at 875. Um, 
I would just say that um, based on the in information that I just put in there into the, to the record that you guys will get a chance to look at, I'm sure this is probably going for a deferral. But at the end of the day, we've done a lot of extensive work to try to figure out what needs to get done there. And, and it's, just, it's just one of those things. Yeah, that, you're here. Go ahead. Not, not probably a good time for him to talk now. Yeah. All right. So, um, Jeff, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Hey, um, Laura, can you just uh, oh, uh, invite me to uh, to the meeting uh, on Zoom? But I can. Um, I I have heard uh, most of it on, on the cell phone. I'm. Um, I'll do the best I can. Um, Milton, as you know, prides itself in its uh, unique history and our mission. Um, I believe all the citizens of the uh, Milton Historical Society and even the city of Milton uh, want to uh, keep Milton, Milton, if you will, uh, particularly in terms of the design and character. So, um, okay, I see you all now. Can you hear me? Can. Yeah. Okay. All right, um, so tell me, and forgive me if you've already addressed this, I couldn't hear the first part, but um, yeah, I'm just looking at section uh, 64 of the criteria for approving demolitions. And um, can you uh, explain the, the definite plans uh, of the proposed uh, building uh, uh, once it's demolished? The best way for me to answer that question is kind of refer back to what we did down the road at 875 when we entered into the agreement back in the day to try to preserve the stone and incorporate it. I think Robin would attest that working with the city and Bob, the things that we've done there to... Sorry, do you say something? Oh, we, uh, we worked really hard to kind of incorporate all the things that were asked for. And in this new design, which again, you'll see later tonight, that's up for approval for the buildings that will be built down there. We took great care and effort to work with the city to go through every little subtle thing that possibly could be done, including creating this expensive plaza and incorporating all the things um, that were asked of that stone structure to kind of be incorporated to that development. I would say here at that time when that was approved, nobody really knew for sure what was going to happen there. I think the former folks that came wanted to do some grandiose 18,000 something square foot building. I think you guys have seen we've, you know, as a developer, most people try to really shove it down the throats and try to get as much density as you can. We've done a very thoughtful development here. I own a farm up the street. I have, uh, you know, horses up here. So we, we very much care about the character and the, you know, the vernacular of the architecture up here. So we took a, a lot of pride in putting it together there. I would say based on our track record, I think you would know that we would do the same thing up here. It's just unfortunate this house, the lady who owned it that lived there for four years lived it in the most deplorable conditions you possibly can imagine. So. Um, if there was a way to do something, we would have looked at doing that, but we bought the structure basically as it is, and unfortunately, there's really nothing that can be done. But you guys can set the parameters of how you want us to work in our developments. I've showed uh, Robin and others on staff um, some of the plans that we've looked at for a comprehensive development of some other land that we also control there, um, which you guys can put those pieces together to kind of understand. And um, anything that we ever would do singularly on this site, whether it was build a building that was similar to the um, Gaston building across the street, for example, if there was something that fit those um, architectural guidelines to preserve some of the architectural integrity of what's there, we will work to do that um, all day long. And you guys can set those parameters, and as long as we can live with them and my attorney can live with them, we'll, we'll make, that, make that happen. If I could ring in a minute, I think what Jeff is doing is there's a section that we're required to look at as DRB, and it's called Section 64, 2425. Mm -hmm. And there's eight points that we need to look at when we think it's historical, and that's what we're working through. And his question is answered really, no, you don't have any particular plan now. Because if is there a particular use or plan for the building that you have today? And the answer is no. Talk about the, that's, for that, the that's existing structure or for that, that's important. You're there, Jeff. Uh, can you unmute? Uh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I can barely hear you. Um, we, we need uh, to begin with any time there's a demolition, particularly of a house, this is. Of, 
a, a, uh, an attractive house that's reminiscent of the spirit uh, and, and design of uh, the buildings in uh, Milton and Crabapple to, to say to say that it's going to be torn down, a, a perfectly acceptable building from an aesthetic point of view, to something that's going to be like the one down the street is, is just not, it can't work. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, the, um, the demolition has to have an effect that the build, replacement building, it will be uh, in character with the surrounding area. Well, so we have, not, have no idea what, other than, you know, pointing up the street, it's going to be like that. We can, uh, uh, in my humble opinion, um, I think you need to do some homework and um, it, it, you know, convince us that you're going to improve that site. Now, that, now does the um, does the building have uh, impact the ambiance of the area that stands there? Yes, it is old. It needs work. Um, have have you taken reasonable measures uh, to save the building structurally or repair it? I don't know. Is have you? Unfortunately, that wasn't my responsibility. That was the responsibility of the former owner that we bought it for in the condition that it's in right now in your in your city. Uh, no, let me ring in. That's not correct. It's not the former owner. They lived in it and it was staying like it was. You're in for the demo, right? You are. At, wait a minute. This is important. You're in for the demo. You bought it. You want to demo it, and we're evaluating whether to approve a demo. The former owner has nothing to do with this. They lived in it. It was a house, and it's sitting there just that way today. You chose to buy it. If you want to move in it or fix it up and live in it, we don't have a demo, but we have a demo before us. Right. That's where we need to stay focused. And, and that's what I'm trying to get at. The unfortunate circumstance of the, I'm not going to mention name, but of the former owner there, they lived in this property for four years in the most horrid, deplorable. Let's go there. But, but my point is, the property as it exists today, if you, it, nobody over here, I don't think, has even gone over there. I'm, I beg to ask, uh, with all due respect, if uh, yes, Jeff, I've been there two or three times a year. But, ago. but if you went there, like in the last like couple of days, you would see what happened with the people that owned the building, what they did to the building. It's just, it's there's there's nothing really salvageable there, and that structural engineering report will basically give you a lot of the info that you need. I would also say, Charlie, for um, lack of a better way to describe it, much, and I, I, I understand where Jeff's coming from. And again, I implore you, we will work with you guys to do whatever, just like we did down the street. 875 had nothing in, in vision to get. Can we do this too? I'd like to leave 875 out. Okay, that's there, fine. Because we're, we're on a case, legally, we have to do these case by case. Okay, I, I respect that. This is the that. case, let's leave the other owner that, That's out. fine. Let's leave 875 out and let's deal with this case. The point is there have been times in the past where properties that have had no clear path or plan to get things done have had demo permits done, especially when working with people that kind of understand and respect what needs to be done up here in Milton. So I would just say that that's kind of our stance where we are. I could show you uh, plans of things that we can do on the site, some of which Robin and Bob have seen that we could do on the site as is, but some of it is more privy to doing something more grand with some of the other property that we control up there. So it's an evolving deal and an evolving situation. And, and what I would tell you, um, one, I'd like to ask staff, Robin, can you give him this section and make sure he's seen this? Sure. And enter that into the record that we gave it to him? Um, because you're not following along with us. So let me ring in on something, and I, want Jeff, I don't want to cut Jeff off. I want him to continue to ask his questions. But you keep bringing up that you own these other properties and that you want to put all this together. And I'm absolutely on record, I'm going to vote no for that. We don't want you to put all those together. This is a historic uh, area, and there's, a, there's number one here. Um, is there any historic scenic or architectural significance of the building structure, site, or object. And it's very much Alpharetta Milton uh, history. And we don't have a lot of that left. And when you look at um, where Tim Bryant, the architect, is, and I guess you bought that too, right? Well, he's a tenant there in the building. 
Yeah, but have you bought that building? I'm not going to go on the record for what we own or don't own or what's going on. It's, there's obviously a lot of confidential information there. But I, I have also talked to staff about that particular building in terms of a theoretical. I would see that as a, a structure that if something was done, it would be like some of the other things that have been done up in the, in the city where buildings that can be salvaged, like that one can be salvaged. You could actually pick that up and you could put it on something. You could find a home for it and put it somewhere that it looks really great in the city. And it could even be incorporated right. into the overall development. And remember, I'm a developer. Right, I've done historic renovations. Um, uh, I bought a $12 million house falling down in Palm Beach that was unlivable and restored that. So I understand what you're doing. I don't want you to pick up Tim Bryant's house and move it somewhere else. I want it to stay right where it is. And, and it very well may stay and I there. I want to see that floor stay right where he is so that the old Milton restaurant will stay where they are. And this whole section requires us as a board to look at these things. Historic renovation and protection and then scenic view corridors and less density all like Canton Street and Roswell, or like North Main and Alpharetta, where all those houses are being, they're a million dollars a house for a little quarter acre that need to be renovated, but they're all filling up with doctors, dentists, all kind of great little uses, and they're historic. We don't want all new downtown Crab Apple built all the way up to that roundabout. That's not what we want to do. So you're, and I just am trying to help you here by letting you know where we're coming from. When you say, well, we'll pick up, Tim Bryant's house could get picked up and moved. No, we're not going to let that happen. And, and again, as I said, it could be, but, but I, we, 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 would en we would envision that particular property being incorporated to the overall development. The unfortunate problem with this house is it's not like the property that Tim is a resident in. I'm, I'm just, if you look at the structural engineering stuff, you know, it's, here, I'm gonna it's ring very, in, very clear. And just for tonight, I'm gonna, and it's only my opinion, it's seven votes here, so we'll see what the board wants to do. That is the simplest, cheapest little construction to renovate. It's a one-story little house. It's wood frame. That house can be renovated easily. It cannot be renovated okay. without being torn down, Charlie. Uh, if you look at the structural engineering report that we entered in the record, you'll see from your history of being in this business, you'll see that the, the quick, quickest and best and most cost-effective solution is to regrade that site the way that that sits. There's all this concrete that's in the ground there that they've buried all the uh, subfloor systems. You can't access anything. The, it's, it's so deplorable, it's just not even funny. And yeah. I promise you. And that's all your opinion. If I, So we don't spend the whole evening, and we started off with we don't want to tie up a lot of people. Yeah, I'd like to, um, be before, I'd like to see if there's anybody from the public who wants to comment on this case. All right. So uh, no public uh, comment. I mean, from from a chairwoman's perspective, um, I, I'm I'm where Charlie is on this particular one. The, the problem, the problem that yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Jeff, you're back. Yeah, and I apologize. I lost audio. So, um, is the open floor right now? Yeah. Yeah. No. Feel feel free to comment. Go ahead and finish since you got cut off. Okay, um, I, I would just, um, you know, I would, I would suggest I would, a look at that um, criteria for approving demolition. There's a lot of things that it, it just would not sit well with. You know, one of them is, is the building uh, uh, capable of earning a reasonable uh, economic return on investment? It's 1,700 square feet. Um, the retail is, is strong right there. I, w I suggest that um, its present use is the highest, best, and best use given the, um, the intention of Milton trying to retain the aesthetic uh, character um, of, of the property. Now, if you were to show us some plans that would convince us otherwise, we would reconsider, but I, I do not see this as an um, acceptable demolition at this point. Yeah. Any more comments from the board on this? Yeah. I mean, if you take a look right next door to the flower shop, they did a fantastic job. I don't know what year they added on to the back of that building, but they probably added an additional, Robin, would you say 2,000, 2,500 square feet 
on the back of that old. That was done. That was our first commercial <coughs> permit under the form based code. Yeah, so um, what you've got is, uh, I'm sure that how, and I don't know, I'm, I probably shouldn't talk in I'm sure's, but. That house is probably as old, if not older, than the subject property we're talking about tonight. And they did a fantastic job expanding their business, expanding the, the keeping the curb appeal and the, the historic value that was there. Uh, if you really were just passing by, you probably wouldn't even know they had an additional square feet on the back. There's, there in, and I've walked this lot, the subject that we're talking about tonight, and there's plenty of space back there to add on to the back. I'd, I'd also say that this property is very different from the property that we're talking about. I think that the one that we're going to be talking about later tonight where... You kind of have this corridor of historic buildings right next to a library and an educational institution where people sort of gather. It's sort of a, um, uh, I don't know what I would want to call it, but it sort of fits with the vibe of that block. And so just to tear it down to build whatever, you know, something that we don't know, I think is probably not the wise move. And, and I want to add to that, Reed, that it, that then affects the florist, the Tim Bryan house, the restaurant across the street, mm -hmm. and it's a unique little district that we believe, I believe is one vote, that should stay there. So, um, Well, I mean, this, this would be considered a character area. This is what this is. It's a character area for crab apple. Um, and if you look at um, some of our overall planning, I mean, this area is pretty specific. So um, for me, being the chairperson um, and listening to all the comments from my board members, um, I, I can't uh, move forward, you know, with letting a demolition go with no plans. I mean, we, we don't know what plans there are. Um, and, and we're fine to provide some of those to you guys in terms of, you know, what we need to do. Sure but unfortunately, some. you know, as I said, we can show you on a computer a million things that can be done there. We've, we've shown a lot of that staff on a as-is basis or with adding things to it. Uh, I will tell you, since you guys haven't been privy to what has been discussed outside this meeting of a theoretical for the property, we've taken great care to create something that actually creates the vision, Charlie, of exactly what it is you guys are talking about that preserves a lot of the character here. But in, until we can, you know, come out with owning all the things that we own to come back and have a more comprehensive plan, what we want to do in the meantime is tear down the structure. We don't intend to build anything back. We can make it, um, you know, uh, contingent upon review of some future plans that you guys can come back and approve, obviously, which you will through DRB when we submit those. Um, we can enter into some kind of an agreement that says we're going to, you know, put things architecturally in or... Perhaps if it's best for the board here, what we do is just defer and come back and bring some plans. You guys can give us some additional um, information that we need to help kind of walk us down that path. I think the end result here is we'll, we'll do something here which will satisfy both the city and you guys to uh, be able to approve us to do this at some point in the future. I think that's the only I, I thing that we that, really can't do. I think that makes sense. The, um, we understand the engineer's report and the cost implication, but that doesn't always achieve the best result. So... I, I side with the board. And, and I do want to mention, you've thrown out Bob several times. Bob and I spent 30 minutes on this topic this morning, and I know where Bob stands. And he's against a demo on this property. And I, I had a long discussion this morning. So if it's time, I will step up. Jeff is off, not on Zoom. If he calls in, again, we'll get him on here. Um, but I would make a motion on 835 Mayfield Road to um, make a motion that there would be no demo. Doesn't mean you can't come back in a year or two when all these grand ideas are <coughs> finalized, but they're not here today. The section that I keep quoting that we've now given you, every item on there, there's seven, six or seven items, a demo would violate every one of those things that we're supposed to be doing for the taxpayers of Milton. And I don't think, with all of our opinions, anybody on this board is going to be for a demo. I don't want to make a promise that we'd consider something. You can tear it down. We'll talk later. And so I'd make a motion to deny uh, 835 Mayfield Road. Um, and I would respectfully request that we defer so that we can come back per Reed's suggestion with some additional information and also since you allowed us to enter this information into the record 
I'm sorry. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. Well, I'd like to finish my comment. Please. I just want to listen. I can't All right. Wait. I'm, okay. Please. I'm the chairman. <laughs> we, we have a motion on the floor. So will somebody second that motion? I don't know if he finished it. Did you finish I, it? No, I, I did. Yes, I, I no okay. second. So motion on the floor. I heard a second. Yes. All right. So the motion is to deny the demolition, and we have a second. And all in favor of that motion. And I see if Jeff's here. Jeff, Aye. 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 So uh, Jeff voted. Ms. Palmer is trying to Aye. get back on. Aye. So okay. well, we 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 took we we have a full vote. So okay. that's fine. Just to let you know. And just for the record, Jeff voted with the denial. Yep. We're sorry for all the Zoom stuff. You know, obviously we need to upgrade that. All right. So the vote vote is over. Um, thanks for coming forward, and um, you'll. I guess you can talk to the city more about what you guys want to do moving forward. Thank you, Charlie. I'll try to get in by Zoom. Uh, but I thought it was important to make sure I was counted on this vote. Yeah, and Jeff, you're fine. Just Robin says you can stay on my phone, Robin, right? Yeah, just, but he need, yeah, just yeah, that's commit great. to one or the other. All right, he's going to stay on my phone because okay. that's working. And uh, Ms. Palmer can't hear anything for some reason through the Zoom. So even though it's working according to the AV tech person. So I don't know what to say. All right. Okay. Next item on the agenda is 15245 Birmingham Highway. If the applicant can come forward, state your name and address. An applicant. I don't, uh, looks like nobody's here. Okay. Um, so then probably need to um, defer. Do you want me to try and move it or defer it? Defer it. Okay. So can somebody make a motion to defer 15245 Birmingham Highway? You want to move it to the end of the meeting? You want to defer it? No. Sue said right. she wanted to defer right. it. I'll so make a motion to defer 15245 Birmingham Highway. Demo. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, next item for demolition is 2445 Mountain Road. If the applicants could come forward, state your name and address, and explain your uh, demolition project. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Layla Hasanovic. This is my husband, Arnell Hasanovic. We own the property um, to, on 2445 Mountain Road. And um, we would like to demolition the property um, via an environmentally friendly way, so deconstruction, and salvage as much material as possible. Um, we're currently working with an architect to build a home, um, so it's in the design process, but. Uh, and is, there, uh, is there any historical significance on this particular property? No. Yeah, can I ask staff? Uh, no. Okay. All righty. And what, what's your timeline for building um, the your new home? So currently with how it's going, I don't think that it would happen until later on this year. Um, we just started with our architect, so she's giving us a range of like six to eight months of just design. Um, so I don't think it's going to happen until maybe early fall. Okay, um, so just a, just a couple of suggestions then is um, to make sure if in fact uh, you demolition this um, soon is to make sure that you've got nice grass there yeah. and that it's in its mode. Um, yeah. If you've got, um, are, are your plans to use your existing septic system or are you oh, filling no. it in? No, so the septic system is actually, um, uh, in front of the setback line, so it actually has to be removed. Okay. Um, and it's really old, um, okay. so according to inspection, it would have to be removed regardless, okay. and it wouldn't be able to um, be used, so it has to go in another place on the property. Okay. Yeah. 
new better. Septic, new septics are better than old. Yeah, septics. yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I agree. You want to build a big new house, you want a new septic. Yeah, that's uh, yes. true. Uh, any, any other questions from the board for the applicants? Uh, I'm prepared to move forward with a... Public. Uh, pardon? In public. Oh, yeah, thanks. Any, any public comment on this? No. No, oh, okay. Um, so if somebody would like to make a motion for approval. Make a motion to approve the demolition of 2445 Mountain Road. No, second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck on your new house. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. Our next demolition item is 2865 Web Road. If the applicant could come forward. Okay, deferral. They must have heard it was a dangerous night. <laughs> Apparently so. Uh, if somebody could make a motion to defer this item. I'll make a motion to defer 2865 Web Road demo. Uh, somebody could second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Next item is 15448 Hopewell Road. If the applicant can come forward, state your name and address, and explain your project. Good evening. Uh, Maher Boudir, 915 uh, Cranberry Trail, Roswell, Georgia. Um, here on behalf of uh, Georgia Trust Properties. Um, we purchased this property. Uh, the house is not visible from the road. It hasn't been uh, lived in for at least three years. Uh, it's really in, in a bad shape. Its uh, vegetation has overtaken a good portion of it. Uh, and we plan to uh, Combine this property with a couple of other properties that are facing Thompson. Uh, so uh, we would like to demolish this house along with the septic system and the barn that is set back even further from the road. The barn has already fallen on the ground. It's, you know, the roof is on the ground, a good portion of it. And we want to salvage whatever we can from the uh, lumber that's there uh, and, and just uh, make it safer. And what are the plans for this property? So the, the um, uh, buyer, uh, as a buyer, we wanted, we wanted to combine the three properties that, that we purchased. And we, we have an application, active application, that is to be heard by the city. And, and, and the staff has already reviewed it. Uh, the plan is to combine those three properties and keep the entrance, the main entrance of a Thompson Road and uh, create a development uh, that's suitable for the area. And just to interrupt, um, if I can, from what I understand, when you met with staff, you were speaking about doing large lots on that. Is that correct? We're, we're considering it. Yeah, we, we haven't made a decision, honestly, but obviously it's going to be uh, subdivision. Subdivision, um, you know, one to three acre lots, and, uh, you know, with individual septic systems. So it's basically he's taking down the buildings in preparation to start for a subdivision. So we're in talks about encouraging him to do three-acre minimum lots, but that's to be determined, and he has a right to do less than that uh, acreage per lot. If How many chooses. acres are you going to have when you get them all put together? Uh, 20.5 approximately. Okay, if you, you're going to call the public. Do we yeah, I can. Uh, is there any public comment? No. No. no I'd make a motion to approve the demo for 15448 Hopeful Road as submitted. Anyone want to second? I, I second, and with a comment, I commend you for preserving the barnwood. Yeah, that's great. All right, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm here for the next. Oh, one. you've got your next. The next two, actually. I believe so. We got to go <laughs> till we get to 22 acres, right? <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> All I was right. asleep on that. Uh, so yeah, just stay up there, and <laughs> <laughs> we have one. Next one is one five two five zero Thompson Road. Yes. Um, so you know, again, my name is Maher Budir of nine fifteen Cranberry Trail, Roswell, Georgia. Um, this uh, house has been lived in actually until recently by the Bakers. It's a relatively modern house, uh, but it also is, uh, you know, part is going to be part of the uh, development uh, along with the adjacent properties. And it, there's also a modern uh, structure. It's not really a barn. It's more like a workshop that, unfortunately, when the seller removed out, they took out the sheet metal. And there's only a bunch of sticks standing there, and it's really <laughs> modern, fresh wood, it looks like. So we'd like to take that down as well, uh, as, as, um, as well as the, the little chi chicken coop that's there. There's really, the lumber is not the quality that's salvageable. It's, it's you know, a white pine, you know, it looked like it just came from Home Depot, so... And I assume there is no historical significance to this? I don't think so. <laughs> How long have you owned the property? We owned the property about uh, since December. And we're also talking to the, um, the city about the fire station expansion that they're planning and accommodating their septic tank properly on that yeah. property. Can you expand on that, Ron? So basically, um, the new fire station that's just to the west of there, um, there was need for septic field area. So Mr. Mahir has been um, very helpful with um, open to um, allowing us to use a portion of the lower southern, southwestern corner to be used for the septic field. So instead of us pumping it down to the park or whatever, um, we can do it there. So, so we're working with legal. When you're ready. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, nothing, I think nothing, okay. I think I think we're ready. All right, I'd make a motion since you and I are getting all this twenty-two acres done. Okay, um, I'd make a motion to approve fifteen two hundred and fifty Thompson Road as submitted. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And on to the last item, which is one five two six zero Thompson Road. Right. Um, so this is um, a house that's been abandoned actually since 2016 at least, hasn't been lived in. And you see the pictures. Uh, there's a pole barn there that uh, we would also like to preserve. Uh, there are some amazing trees around it that we want to make sure we save and, and, and fence properly before we do the demo. Uh, but it's a smaller house. It's been there. It's, it's been uh, boarded up actually for a while, and we'd like to take, take it down. It is visible from Thompson Road. And I assume no, no historical qualities on this one either. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think so, but I had to ask. Uh, any comments from the public? No. Okay. Well, if it's time, Charlie, I'd if... make a motion for 15260 Thompson Road to a demolition to be approved as submitted. Second? I will second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank Jeff, you. Jeff was, a, Jeff was an eye on that one, too. I heard him. We. Oui. Right. Madam Chair. We do, we do have one more demo as per the new agenda. That's correct. We do. Uh, let's see. And let me make sure I have the address. It's 13760 Hopewell Road. Uh, yeah. And I was this looking is at project. City property. All right. Yep. Uh, 13760 Hopewell Road. If the applicant could come forward. I will. Yeah. 
Robin. So this is actually Public Works is requesting this demolition for uh, preparation of construction of the roundabout there at Hopewell and Thompson. So that is the purpose of it. So if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. So. Robin, can you say that one more time, please? You want me to say that again? Please. Yes, yeah, so this house is um, part of uh, within the area of construction for the new roundabout at Thompson and Hopewell. And so there was a need to... Do you have uh, anything on this? To demolition. No, none of us do. It came oh, in late. I was missing something. Bob, Bob wanted to push it through tonight and get it done. Um, do you not have the package information? None of you us do. have it? I don't... We sh we sh didn't we have hard copies for them? Not see it. I have it in mind. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't see it. Well, it's on the um, it's on the north west corner. Or no, I'm sorry. Wait, I, I'm sorry. Totally forget about that. This is the roundabout at Bethany and Hopewell. I'm sorry. Oh. We did that before. I'm sorry. Okay. I should have looked at it. This is at the new roundabout um, at Bethany, Benz, and Hopewell. Oh, yes. <laughs> I knew she did it. I'm so sorry. Thank You're trying you. to sneak one by us, weren't you? I no, know. No I think paperwork. you guys already approved that demo up at the... <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure. I yeah, it just did. reappeared at night, and then you had to do it again. <laughs> so, like, what? And again, apologize for... Yeah, I think I, I know. What yeah, so it's just, it uh, looks like a 50s ranch. Yeah. Um, pretty much in disrepair, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go by there all the time. Do <laughs> you have any questions? Yeah, it, it has no redeeming quality. Yeah. Plus, they need it for the roundabout anyway. So. Yeah, definitely. And we need the roundabout. Thank you. And has the city bought this already? I believe all the acquisitions have been done or yeah. easements that they need for construction. Mm -hmm. Yes, so they're, they're ready to go. So that's why they wanted so it on So you're before us meeting. because you're the owner. I'm sorry? The city's the owner. So that's why you're before us. The yes. city's the owner. It's a city application, yes. yes. You're not speculating and you're really going to build a roundabout, right? Yes, they are. Okay. I think the money's committed. It's it's a done deal. So mm -hmm. public. Well, if there's no other questions, could somebody make a motion? Motion to approve the demo of thirteen seven sixty Hopewell Road. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <clears throat> So we're going to move into courtesy reviews. Uh, these are items that the design, design Review Board does not vote on, but we do provide um, our feedback and input to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, so all of you who will be coming forward will be ending up going from us to the BZA. Um, and all of our input will be duly noted um, for their next meeting. So the first item we have under our courtesy review is V21-06. The address is 810 Guardian Court. And that the uh, zoning is to allow an accessory structure to encroach into the rear yard setback uh, to remove a condition set in case B20-15, approving the encroachment with conditions. So if the applicant could come forward, state your name and address, and tell us about your project. Hello, my name is uh, Brent Leiby. I'm a home builder. I build homes in uh, the Manor Golf and Country Club, where this property is. Uh, this is uh, Wayne Massey. He's uh, the owner of the property in question. Um, what we're requesting is uh, an adjustment to the previously approved variance. Uh, when we initially applied for the variance, we hadn't uh, designed the structure completely. So we didn't have the size uh, completed. Uh, and we actually were, weren't aware there was a size 
um, added to the variance. So uh, Mr. Massey has uh, communicated with all his neighbors. Everybody's in favor of, of what he's doing. Uh, we, we now have plans that I think you guys might have at this time. Uh, Do you all have any plans? I don't have I any don't. plans. Yeah, I we'll have, have no plans. the structure. Now we just, um, oh. there's only the uh, site plan. No. Nope. Yeah. There's no. Okay, well, it's a, we can provide that. It's a, it's a small open air structure, um, kind of a timber frame, um, outdoor kitchen type structure. It, it partially eclipses his existing pool deck and hot tub area. Um, and uh, the, the structure actually is a little bit larger than what the, the original zoning allow, or variance allowed for. Yeah. Great. Robin, while they're pulling that up, do you have a history on this experience? Yeah. I, I do have some. So I th uh, in last year, July, they had applied for this variance, and uh, they were approved with a condition. And at that time, they had shown 25 by 25 uh, foot structure, so they conditioned it to be that size, but when they came back for permitting, it was larger than that. So we told them that they have to go back and get the condition removed or modified to suit their new structure's dimensions. How, how is 25 by 25 and how large is it now? It's, it's now 25. They just gave me this plan. Um, Mr. Builder, do you know how, do you know the size? We have a site plan. Yeah, I need, I need a site. So basically because the BZA approved a specific footprint of 25 by 25, this is a different footprint. And so therefore the need to go back to the Board of Zoning Appeals for a re-review. Something important to me, how many feet... Of variance prior to they get did they get and how much more it's not so much the size of the structure for me it's the feet of variance he's asking for right I, I think previously it, it uh, the structure was about 37 feet off the the rear line now it's going to be about 30 feet so um, in our package which wasn't complete um, I've got an old document that doesn't that shows the 37. Is this the variance last summer? Yes, sir. That's that's what we got the first time. 37. Is this the new document that we're yes, going to have in the files? But and so it's 30 feet. So it's yes, not sir. about. It's it's seven feet difference. So that's correct. Feet. Yes. No. Okay. Um, I'm a developer. That's a really good looking building. I'm going to pan out just a little bit of that. Or some yeah. Help. Oh, yeah, it's really pretty. And I guess everybody in the audience can see it. Yeah, that's great looking. Mm -hmm. um, Is the rear just going to be brick on the back? We've got to go through the process of everybody asking questions, but I, I, I for one, would hope to get this approved and move on. Back. Yeah, the corner where that W is would be, no, go back down. Yeah, so that we've would got be a the, document, Robin, that's going to be in the record, a new one that shows where it is, the right size. Right, it'll have that, Mc, yeah. Mc, McWhorter and Anderson survey, and he's 30 feet off the back line. Correct. So when we prepare for the Board of Zoning Appeals, they'll have the exact um, uh, plans with the exact location and all that. So we make sure that that's... All right, that, that's Don't helpful the too. This aerial view shows that there's, I mean, that you definitely need those two pieces as well as your comments from your neighbors approving to show that there's quite a bit of um, tree viewscape here where you're not in anybody's view, which is a good thing. Visible from in Yeah, in right. So, the increase in size in the structure doesn't make any difference. No, it's not making any. <laughs> Seven feet closer. And the reason it had to do that is we're sitting part of the structure over a wet bar pool area, and 
had to everything had to shift to get a little wider to fit. When you go to BZA, take a bunch of pictures of these drawings because it's a beautiful building. Yeah. And just ask for seven feet and just say, I'm sorry, I came in, I built a fa fancier building, and I need seven more feet. Here's what I want. Show them this area with all these trees behind mm -hmm. you. And stop talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Okay. When you're doing good work. Yeah. You're doing no, good work. No, I understand. Yeah, I mean, I, I, any other comments from the board? Any comments from the public? No. Yeah, I, I, it sounds like everybody's in agreement here um, that we support the seven feet. Yes. So, yeah, we're, we're supportive of asking for the seven because I don't think it really has much of an impact. So Thank good you. luck with your project. Thank you. Very pretty. Looks great. Thank you very much. Our next item for courtesy reviews is V21-07, addresses 15785 Burdett Court, to allow an accessory structure to encroach into the rear yard setback. If the applicant could come forward and talk about the project. Hi. Greg Tinker, I live at 15785 Burdett Court. And what we're asking for is our setback on the property is currently at 50 feet. We're asking for the setback to be changed to 25 feet. Uh, to, it will be the same as our side setback, which is at 25 feet. The reason for it is we are building a shop, not like a storefront. This is, I call it a barn, but I'm not allowed to because it's not live animals. <laughs> but it will look like a Milton City. It's a farmhouse structure. This is a new home that we just built with Patrick Malloy Homes in Milton Run subdivision, just up the road on Freemanville. But uh, what you'll see here in the diagram, let me uh, show my diagram here. Um, you'll notice we're putting in a pool behind our property. And so the pool will be completed. You'll notice that this is um, a watershed diagram for the septic system and the reason we did this or we're, we're putting this drawing in front of you is so you can visualize why we're asking for the setback the center area of the property which is a 1.2 acres is um, a runoff area there's no there should be some photographs to kind of help uh, show you this but it's not like a river or a dry river bed but when heavy rains come that area is wet and we don't want to change the water flow Behind that, uh, to the left on this drawing, you'll see n away from the pool, that is our secondary um, septic field. So we can't put the structure on the septic field that's already been zoned. And there's trees there as well we don't want to cut down. Where I have drawn the diagram in is a sh uh, the building or uh, shop will be a 28 by 24. And it will. I have drawings of it that you'll see here in a moment. But this is the footprint we're asking for that will keep the 25-foot minimum setback. You'll notice the angle in which the property sits. Of course, uh, the 25-foot will be the minimum. It will be more than that due to the angle, depending on where you stand behind the, the shop. The, um, not a whole lot to see there, it's just a square. Okay. The facility of the barn. I call it a barn in these diagrams. Before I learned, I'm not allowed to call it a barn. Um, it will look, well, that's kind of zoomed way in, sorry. Okay, yeah, it's zoomed in too tight. Oh, I see it right here. Yeah. Zoom. Yeah. yeah, this is much better. Yeah, there you go. So it will look like a, a farmhouse to match the board and batten of the home. It will match um, explicitly with color. Uh, it'll be, she, uh, not sheet rock, but hardy plank siding. It's not going to be cheap material. The, the intent is to give it the same aesthetics as the house. Um, it'll be um, what they call architectural shingles and stuff. It'll have barn doors. It will look just like a modern Milton barn, but not a barn. It's a shop. There's no live animals in it. Um, I did not 
have any printouts, but I think you guys have some photographs that were taken to kind of show you what I'm talking about with respect to the brown stain on the on the water shed. I, d- I don't. No, I don't have any. Yeah, I'm. I just have a black and white drawing, hand drawn. Yeah, I have no pictures. There, oh, do they have the photographs? Did not include the photographs. No, no, there was no photographs here. Remember the photographs I emailed? Let's take a look. I do have them on my phone. I can show them to you guys if you are interested. Do we need any more information on this? Yeah, I mean, I, I, a couple of things I need is I need a site plan that shows ra- surrounding properties. I need to know what the original structure looks like for the house <clears throat> and need to understand if you've gotten approval from the neighbors that are near for this structure. I have approval letters from all the neighbors regarding the ask. Um, so I do have all the letters uh, from all my neighbors. The staff have that? Yes, uh, I have received uh, letters from the neighbors, and I do have pictures too, but I, I, they were not in set up to go in this packet, so they were just in the form of we emails. We can get so. you an overall of the site plan if you'd like to see that. Want to see the... Yeah, it, I mean, it'd be helpful to understand what the existing structure looks like just to see kind of what they're... Is there an existing structure? There is no existing structure. If they're just building no, a new I, structure. I thought the house was built. Oh, well, the house is built. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I see the house compared to what you're going to build to make it, sure everything's consistent. The aerials consistent. we have may not Classic. capture. The area, yes, this is brand new. You won't see a picture of that, but I do have a picture here. It includes the sign. One second. Let me zoom in here. Yeah. There you go. Okay, Modern technology. Very helpful. <laughs> that helps. Yeah, okay. And I do have a prof picture of the back, but you're going to see nothing but a mud pit when the pool is getting <laughs> built. Um, you want to see another picture of the rear? Yeah, that'd be great if you've got a second. It. While you're pulling that up, it sounds like you may already have this, but it may be helpful when you go to the EZA just to have a, instead of just a hand-drawn where it's going to go, uh, an actual site plan. Mm-hmm. You may have staff. I'm not I sure. I do have a site plan, yeah, okay. yes. And I think one Reed, that you Reed have makes it. a good point for you. Uh, get organized and have all your stuff in the package so that when staff sends it to the board, they see it all before you're standing up there. Because uh, we all study this stuff for a long time before these meetings. Mm-hmm. So the better the package you have with PZA, the better you'll do. Gotcha. Okay, so I will have the photographs printed out, but this kind of shows you the rear of the property. Oh, I Hold see up, it right zoom. there. Hmm. So as you can see, this is us now, me standing on the back corner. Well, not the back corner, just a good bit back. So you can see what I was talking about with the way the sloping of the property is. So I can't put the barn or shop anywhere close to here because it will really block the watershed. Not to mention. And the last comment uh, shows where, and uh, where is the picture? Yeah, definitely need to, my kids taking too many photographs with my phones. Oof. I can show you the plot while oh, here, or awesome. just the overall. Um, And I would ask what the chairwoman asked is your your neighbors have get behind you and on either side of given the approval you got letters from them? There's no neighbors behind our property. As you can see here, there's 167 acres owned by, I think, uh, I know the family, but I don't think I'm allowed to say um, in public record. But the, that's 167 acres that's zoned. I forgot what it's zoned. It's not agricultural, AG1. Um, and the only neighbors I have are the ones to my left and right. Um, it's still a new subdivision. There's only 27 homes, and uh, there's a bunch that have not sold yet, but I've gotten uh, eight letters so far. But the, the key is the two on either side of you. I'm sorry? The, the neighbors on either side of you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I only have a neighbor on one side. The other one hasn't sold yet. Okay. But I'd make that point to BZA. and put that I do have package. a letter from the uh, Patrick Malloy Homes as well uh, from them. That's good, too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because since... So everything's AG1 up there. I just don't. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So, um, I will get a better photograph so you can see the landscape of where it's going. Uh, but the other reason I want to go back 25 feet is so I don't have to cut down another oak. That's the objective. Um, where the barn will move, I don't have to cut down a large oak. If I have to go in there, I a have a problem with the septic field. Fulton County septic would have to approve. I don't know if I'm going to get that. And then next, if I did, I still have to cut a tree down. So I'm trying to go back 25 foot. I'll have still 25 foot before I hit my end of my property, but I don't have to cut the trees down. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board? Any comments from the public? Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think we're all in agreement. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. But key point that both of these gentlemen made is to make sure you get your documentation pulled together so that it's really easy for folks to see what you're trying to do yeah. and uh, you'll the have much more luck that way. <laughs> yeah, no, all right, thanks so our, much. Our job is to make you successful. So, um, so yeah, pull that together and I think you'll, I think you'll be fine. So, okay. all right, thanks so much. Good luck. Thank Appreciate you. it. Um, I'll just, the um, next item is, uh, you've got the address, so. Yeah. Uh, 13555 Black Marl Lane. Right. So, and again, I profusely apologize, it's been crazy. Um, so this is a request um, for rezoning. This is a little different. Um, this is a part of um, a subdivision that is zoned CUP, Community Unit Plan. And um, the applicant who owns um, 10.8 acres, lot six, um, they are requesting to rezone it back to AG1. And the purpose of that is that they are intending to uh, create a winery and an. You. Yeah. Uva, I can hear you. You sorry. need to talk up there. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, um, the intent for the applicant in this rezoning is to go back to AG1 so that he can be licensed as a, um, a winery with the state. So it has to be AG1. And um, I'm sure he can explain more, but that's uh, the point of these, this um, rezoning. So it's a little different than what we're used to. And as you can see, um, there's an existing barn on the property. And, uh, Robin, this was just given to me, all of sorry, us. Sorry, what? This was just given to all of us. So this is before us. We As a courtesy review. As a courtesy review. That's to go to I planning commission. Because you said, yeah, rezoning. So it's courtesy for us and then recommendation going to planning commission. Correct. Okay. Well, I mean, it, courtesy, yes. It's the same thing as the variance. Yeah, yeah but it's yeah. going to planning commission. Yeah, for, for them to prepare. Me off was the winery and a rezoning and right. So okay. Yeah. So it's for them to make recommendations to the mayor and city council. Um, so you can see this is the existing um, structure, and then this is the proposed house. But the the main reason, obviously, he could have done that under a CUP, but um, the goal is to be able to have. Uh, a winery and he can explain more about what his intentions are but and a very unique rezoning so but robin before you step away what yeah. is the cup exactly for it's a meaning community of unit plan so um like kingsley is developed under the cup um in ag1 in unsewered areas um crooked creek is a cup but the idea i like to call it the burger king way where people can dictate the lot sizes, not so much in unsewered areas, but in Crooked Creek is a perfect example of having different pods of different size lots with different setbacks, and that's the intent. Um, and so for this, I have no idea why they went to CUP on this back side of the subdivision. Maybe the applicant knows, but um, anyway, that's what a CUP is. And actually, you'll be seeing a courtesy review next next month on another CUP that's coming off of Freemanville Road that's a little bit more normal CUP to go from AG1 to CUP. So what, uh, okay, that's fine. Never mind. I'm sorry. 
But yes, that's what we don't get a lot of CUPs, but um, doesn't matter. This is going back to AG1. So. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Uh, Jim Rosenberger, and I'm the owner of uh, 13555 Black Merrill. Um, also own Lot 7, which is 13560 Black Merrill, which is three acres. And then on the other side of that, 13560 Black Merrill is um, seven and a half acres, and I own that as well. So it's all, all told about 21 acres that we own on this, on this cul-de-sac. Um, what's interesting is 13545, which is... The other direction, my next door neighbor, they are already AG1. So I don't really understand why we're cup, but they're AG1. We're all part of the same uh, eight, you know, eight lot subdivision. And it just seems a little bit random in, in some regard. Uh, one of the interesting things is if I pull this back a little bit here, there is this whole subdivision up here that we back up to, and that whole thing is AG1. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how we became cup. Um, the gentleman that developed our subdivision many years ago um, was a guy who sold his company and made a lot of money. He wasn't really a developer. So I think some of the things he did were just based on his inexperience in doing something like that. Um, so that's part of uh, the reason um, why we have this. Um, <laughs> the, the, the winery is kind of an interesting, um, funny story. Um, it was a horse barn. And we have kids who used to ride horses. And then I went, out, I went out of town one day, and I said, guys, I'm going out of town for 10 days. you got to take care of the horses. And they gave me the, really? Come on, Dad. And I'm like, my 20-year-old and my 18-year-old who have horses won't take care of them? So two weeks later, the horses were gone, and I said, you know what? I'm making wine. And that became our little side project. So when Robin describes a winery. It's not going to be a commercial winery where people come daily and do tastings. We're in a subdivision. But under the George Farm Winery Act, I'm allowed to make wine, but I can only do it... I can do it under a cup, but I have to call myself a country club, which is kind of a roundabout way of doing it, which is, eh, let's do it the right way. So we decided to go ahead and try to get the rezoning um, to do it the right way and not try to have to play games to try to get to the end result a different path. Um, I can kind of show you some pictures of what we look like. And let me just, while he's getting his pictures up, I wanted, I forgot to let you know that um, a farm winery is a use by right within AG1, so he doesn't need another use permit or anything. It's like having a vet clinic or a kennel um, in AG1, so just... It'd be the same way on the CUP if he was calling himself a country club? Is that what I heard? Well, I think that that's where the conundrum comes. We wouldn't allow it in our code. Maybe the state does, and maybe other jurisdictions do, but it's only by right under AG1, so... So this front building right here is the existing bar. This is what it looks like today. And what we're... Proposing, in fact, I have building plans that were submitted on a Friday uh, to build the home. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to break ground tomorrow. <laughs> um, obviously, we have to go through the whole review process. We submitted originally in December, got some comments back, um, and then resubmitted the building plans for the new home on Friday. And so we're here in you know a couple days, a couple weeks, at some point, what the status of getting that building permit is. Um, our plan would be to build, you know, to break ground as soon as we get the building plans to start the preparation, getting our silt fans and start building almost immediately. This will be um, the side of the house that will adjoin to the barn, that will connect to the barn. The barn will be in front of this. See the horses, but they're gone. Remember, because the kids wouldn't, <laughs> kids wouldn't take care of them. So, um, so that, that's what our our, our goal is here: um, is to create this this uh, this uh, development, really for personal family use. Um, we've lived in the house 
at 13560 next door since 2007 when, when I built it. Um, and we're, we're putting that one up for sale. Um, it's that's, sweet. that's lot seven. I'm looking at your site plan. The house you've always yes. Built, that's lot seven. Correct. One to the left. Yeah. Correct. I built that in, in 2007. It's about 14,000 square feet. It's um, I built it with my ex-wife. That was her dream, not mine. And uh, I got remarried six years ago and uh, have di decided to downsize. Um, we're from four kids down to two, and the new home we're building is going to be about 5,000 square feet. <laughs> more than when, we need to know. So lot seven is an existing house that you own yep. that you're going to sell. Yep. The purple on this site plan, which is a pretty good site plan, um, where the civil is. Um, the purple, the, the front purple one. one let, let me finish. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's see if I can catch up on this. We've never seen this till it was handed to us a few minutes ago. The purple is the existing barn. You showed us a picture. Yep. The purple is the proposed home Correct. that you want to build. And the barn and lot seven and the divorce is all legal because you can do that without seeing us, right? Right. All the, all the structures yeah, he's proposing is really it's it's a use internal issue. to a subdivision. He, he no, can do everything he right. wants to do. Um, it's the wine thing that it's we're the really wine dealing thing. with. As well as he's doing a concurrent variance to allow that accessory structure to be in, in front of the house. Okay, but with all these acreage, that's probably fine. Right. Um, so now you are in a subdivision. So I'm good with all these houses and kids and horses and everything yeah. we've heard about tonight. I'm good with. Right. Except the winery in a cul-de-sac neighborhood. Have you gotten anything from your neighbors? They want free access, of course, but other than that... <laughs> um, Seriously, do you have a letter from the neighbors? I do, and, and, and it's not a commercial operation. It's not a, it's, we're not going to have business hours. We're not going to be open from 9 to 4. It's going to be literally the ability for us to, to really blend our own wine, not to have a retail establishment. So the, 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 the traffic increase as a result of this will be nil. There'll, there'll be nothing there. It's just to Here's what allow I would us tell you. to... Here's what I would tell you. In all our many years listening to all these, everything morphs into something else later. Right. So while I hear you and respect you, you could sell it tomorrow. Mm. And then we got this winery that I want to focus on. And um, I've got my 18 acres, and I would be upset if somebody was going to do a winery just for themselves but got that designation right. next door to me. And I'm on Freemanville, so I'd be, I'd be worried about that. And I, our job is to protect the public. Right. So all the side issues, again, I've said sound great. They can be done under CUP, right? I mean, the other, the building Houses and all that. And, right. So you right. can do so, that, but you can't do the farm winery. So that would be my worry in a CUP neighborhood that has other vested interest owners mm -hmm. and legal rights. Right. The most important thing to me as one member of this board, and I hope planning commission asked, is these neighbors need to give you a letter that they're good with this. Right. And that's what I'd want to hear you have from everybody in this CUP. Now, I'm going to rest my case there. Yeah, because I, I have the same concern, Charlie, to be quite honest, is just... You know, I, I I love landowners to do what they want with their property because yeah. I'm in the same boat. I want to do the same thing. But... Um, I, my concern would be down the road when eventually at some point in time you sell and decide right. to retire somewhere else or whatever that entails. Um, and whoever buys the property now has that and what are they going to do with it? I mean, I trust you and mm -hmm. I trust what you're doing with yeah. it. It would be that down the road problem for me is just what, what's going to happen. So can I make a suggestion, and I can double-check before we go to Planning Commission, um, but because it's going before a rezoning process, there's conditions to it, which is pretty unnormal for AG1, but um, I can check with the city attorney, and if the applicant is open to it, to have a restriction of it to be just a winery for the use of the owner. So mm -hmm. zoning goes in perpetuity, so whether he sells or not, that that could be. I'm not committing. I'm just as no, no, an no, idea. I, no, and, and the only thing I was going to say is I, I agree. There's nothing I disagree with. And the only comment I would make is 
they're different issues. Because just because we're zoned AG doesn't mean we can do wine. It means we have to come back in front of you and say, can we do a winery? And at that point, I think, is when these conditions would say, well, you're in a neighborhood, so I'm not really sure you can do that. I think today, can I interrupt all we're looking what, for is I just... To, I need to ask a question, because what you just said is, I thought I heard Robin say something different. You said, right. if you're going to do a winery, you're going to come back to us. I heard Robin say, if you get AG, you have a... You can, it's by right. What's your term? All right. It's by right. Once you have AG, you don't have to come back to us. You have a right in AG yeah. in Milton to do that winery. And to do a commercial, to do like the painted horse. They're only AG1. They have nothing else. You know how she runs her so business. We've engaged Michelle Stumpy, the uh, alcohol attorney, to help us through that whole process. And she's the one that said that we'd have to go back to the Milton board to say, okay, we want to do a winery. And at that point, there'd be a discussion about that. That's... She might be confusing because last summer there were some discussions about uh, amending um, the code so that you could sell beer and wine. And then we were talking about having an extra um, hearing, but that never came to fruition, no pun intended. But... Um. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but and, I, and, 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 I'm, and, I'm, and so... It it is by right. So yeah. um, the Painted Horse Winery operates in the way that she operates by producing grapes, you know, producing wine, selling, having wine tastings, all by rights in AG one without coming back to us for that winery. So I think maybe the attorney was getting caught up in the maybe. discussions we had last summer. About right, so possibly yeah, changing. I make a suggestion. So we got to listen. We got to listen to staff. And uh, when you said that, I'd heard her say something yeah. else, and that was my understanding of the law. Also. Okay, AG gives you those farming rights, and mm -hmm. you know, orchards and selling apples or peaches or right. or wine. Right. And so, I'm going to have a position whenever um, chairwoman is ready to hear them. And um, I, I'm ready to give you my thoughts whenever you all are finished. Yeah, maybe I make a suggestion to sure. you. So I'm sort of caught in a similar situation that, that you are, where I live on acreage in Milton, and we're zoned R2. And there's really no reason for us to be zoned R2. We're agricultural. It's sort of treated that way. All of our neighbors are. There's no reason at all. Just sort of a like this CUP designation. And there, there may be other, I don't, I'm not going to start a winery, but um, there may be other benefits for me and all my neighbors that are designated as R2 in our little subdivision to be converted back to uh, AG1. And uh, certain rights that were granted or just maybe other reasons. I think people, generally speaking, maybe Robin, you can tell me if I'm wrong, would like to be AG1 in the city of Milton, correct? Maybe they would see that as a, a better designation than a residential R2 cup, whatever you want to call it. Is that correct? Okay, say that the beginning part of Yeah, so um, there may be other uh, advantages by being zoned AG1 than CUP or R2. Correct. From a tax Correct. perspective, I just, I from just other perspectives, it. then maybe it just gives me the freedom to be, have exactly. a winery. Because so R2 maybe is the angle is, hey, neighbors, there may be an advantage for us all being designated as AG1. Let's all get together and do that, regardless of what your future intentions are. But there's a significant difference in this case, in your situation, all of you are on big lots with your own driveway off a public highway, mm -hmm. off Bethany. I'm on Freemanville with my own drive into my 18 acres, and, and I'm, you're AG, you could be AG too. In this case, my hang up, as somebody supposed to protect the public, mm -hmm. is that you're in a neighborhood and you're on, on a cul-de-sac, so any traffic, one person coming to buy wine is going to be driving by other homeowners and my position is going to be to say no to this unless you get a letter from every homeowner in here that says we think this is great and we approve it because when legally when you buy into a neighborhood all of you have the rights of the declaration that are there that protects everybody no matter who comes and goes over a hundred years you're wanting to change that neighborhood and the rights of all those other homeowners. I'm not against what you want right. to do, but you're in a neighborhood 
not with your own access off a public road. Right. That's sort of what I'm saying, Charlie, is if all of the there may be some other advantages to some of the other residents in the neighborhood. They may not know that they're CUP or that there are advantages to being AG1. And if he goes to him and says, hey, look, maybe it's a benefit for us to be AG1. Here's some things that flexibility provides us. And maybe that's you're saying maybe get the whole neighborhood to go AG1. Just an angle. Yeah, no. That's a good angle. Yeah. But but I guess the question, one of the things I'm confused about is my immediate next door neighbor, 13545, the Coombs, they're on three acres, they're AG1. So not the whole neighborhood is cup. So there's some inconsistency. It's a mismatch. That's so weird. But here's where I come down. They went and got rezoned. They actually went work up and got rezoned AG1. So they were approved to do what we're trying to do. But here's where I come down legally. Yes, sir. And I've been in business 50 years doing this. If there's one homeowner in here that's in a CUP on that public road in that CUP, and there's more than one, so let's say there's two, four, six, eight, whatever. Yeah. You're going to change your zoning at the end of the cul-de-sac, giving you rights they don't have. It doesn't matter about your next-door neighbor. It matters about everybody up the way from you, starting at the public road mm -hmm. in a CUP zoning. Okay. And that's my where I want Planning Commission to hear sure. is until everybody in this neighborhood, and maybe the right answer is what Reed said, the whole neighborhood it, yeah. or get a letter to AG1. Or get a letter. So, so how letters. many? Letters. And how many, how many? How many homes are in here? Five. Well, that makes the problem easier. Yeah, so you only got to get five yeses. Yeah. And they're all friends. I mean, they all support this. They all. Yeah. So how I come mean, you haven't already gotten letters? I'm saying. How come you haven't already gotten their letters and I, I didn't know I'd need it. Um, the way that Robin described it, she just didn't think that I didn't. I didn't really understand that I would need to get letters, but I'm more happy. We, you know, we did our uh, uh, public participation meeting is set up. We sent out 75 letters to everyone within a quarter mile. Haven't had anyone really say anything other than thumbs up. Um, but certainly getting letters could be a, a very The letters is an easy. Yeah, I, I, I think it makes sense, like Reed's saying, to, for the rest of the neighborhood, to, for everybody to be in the same zone. To me, yeah. if you do one, that's just... It's it's odd. I mean, in I think the recommendation to the planning commission should be that really you're looking at if if you've got if you've got this one and this one already AG one, then the rest of them should be rezoned. Yeah, and and everybody have the same rights as an AG one lot. That would be my recommendation. I agree with you. I think that's just, what it's you just should. so strange. It just. It's, it's, it is strange. Yeah. It's different. Well, I don't think you're in a back to title, title insurance and covenants and restrictions, changing yours because you don't have your own road off a of public road. That's where I get really hung up. You're in a dedicated neighborhood, be it five or three, whatever. And I like the idea of changing it all to AG1 also better or to help you along if you just at least got all the letters and, and planning commission say, okay, they're not unhappy with this. And if they get unhappy because you have 10 people coming over to buy some wine, then they they wrote a letter and said, we know yeah. he's going to be a winery yeah, yeah. and he's going to have some traffic. Right. In fact, just for and, more and, information, you know, our plan was never to sell wine retail. Let yeah. me change it. Was always, it was always going to be um, a wine club male business that was if we ever did it that would be the idea is that we don't really i only live in in, in can i in, interrupt the minute i said yeah. you i wanted to take that back in the future when you sell when we sell yes they have other rights and they'll change the deal we've had Correct. numerous cases right. something was something for 20 years in milton and now somebody bought it and gotcha. now they've doubled the veterinarian clinic right remember that one they went to a thousand gotcha. dogs instead of eight hmm. So I think that's, if the, that's what we have to worry about. I yeah. think if you if you talk about trying to, I, I think it makes sense to make everything uniform there. But in the same way that I think Reed said, maybe there are benefits to AG one. I don't know. Maybe there's benefits to the ones that are cup, and so you have to open a whole new debate with your neighbours. Whereas if we're saying the letters are okay if people agree. This practically, I know, so can it homes to me from if I look at overall. This goes back to CPAC, right? Overall planning of how communities look. 
to me, when, you, when I see I've got AG1 all over here in the back and one over here, I, to me, it's just like I would look at that on the map and go, uh, what happened here? So can I interject? I'm just looking at the plat, and I do believe it's coming back to me why many people, especially in Fulton County, would rezone to CUP was to allow it to be a private road. And this is, in fact, um, it changes from um, Providence Plantation, um, and then it goes into this subdivision that is gated. Technically, there's a gate at the front that gates those, what, eight houses or eight lots? Five, yeah, eight, eight Whatever. Lots, five. Yeah. yeah, so, and it's an access easement, so... I believe that, in part, is why they rezoned it to CUP so that they could gate it and have it more private and exclusive, um, and that it is not a pri it is not a public road. It is a shared access easement private road, which means it's going to be subdivision. built to different standards than a public road. Being not a developer and having done that, that CUP in the old days in Fulton County let us save a lot of money. We didn't. We could do a lot of things different on those streets because they were private and they didn't have to be public uh, constructed to well, the standards. Well, currently, at least our, how our code is, it doesn't matter whether it's private or public, it has to be built to city standards. So I can't speak to how this works. But what year was this done? How old is this was, neighborhood? Um, but private is, they're responsible oh, for the the road. Huh? Oh, four maybe, oh, five. Yeah, before we were a city. So it's a Fulton County zoning. Yeah. 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 Robin, so it's Fulton County, so I'm I'm sure of what I'm saying. Right. No, it, it was built to different standards. But we're going to come back in numerous ways, I think, to where we all are, and that is um, we're not against what you want to do. It's just this is a CUP, and it all needs to get consistent, and we've all said it in different ways, but I'm pretty firm in what I think needs to happen, and if you can get all the letters, that would sway me if I was on planning commission. Okay, he's got all these letters. They all know what's going to happen, and they're all supporting this. Excellent. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, to me, it's got to, there's got to be, if I was, you know, coming from a planning commission perspective, I'd want to look at some sort of consistency. So, got to be one or the other. And I think everybody, if you're saying there's a private road, then to me, it's, you know, everybody's got to be on the same page or it doesn't make any sense from a zoning perspective. So either you're all AG1 or you're all CUP. Well, that's, to me, the mix and match doesn't make sense. How would that work? Just out of curiosity, my one neighbor who does have the AG1, he kind of fought to become AG1. Could they make him go back to CUP? Nope, he's AG1. Yeah. But I do everything... That Laura said, but I also, um, again, mine is about the neighbors being supportive. I, I'm fine if it's some CUP and you get AG1 to get what you want, and Planning Commission chose to do that, and these meetings are recorded, and sometimes the mm -hmm. other boards look at them. So I want to be on record that um, I want all the homeowners in there in a private neighborhood to have agreed and expressed that they know what you're going to do. In writing. And they know that in the future, if you sell it, it's going to be that. It could get to be more winery, and right. it could become wine for sale right. with traffic coming through there. Right. What does, does the crop matter? I mean, if I was growing acorns, would that change anything? <laughs> I'm not queuing up for acorns. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. I'm, I'm just curious because, you know, as far as <laughs> our good. winery idea, yeah. at this point, it's just an idea. There's been really nothing that's concrete about the winery, it's just like, wow, wouldn't it be great to do this, a family winery for our family? Um, it just has the potential to be an attraction. I could see people. But could acorns be an attraction? My question, yes. I'm not being sarcastic. Acorn, I'm just saying that let, let, let me, we're let trying me to get an agricultural zoning, not necessarily a winery license. Let me answer your question. Yes, sir. If you're on a public road, you can go to Freemanville and Providence, where Union is. Go 100 yards up, and there's the cutest lady, mm -hmm. and she sells vegetables and fruits all the time. Mm -hmm. My wife's in the back. She goes up there three times a week, and there'll be three or four cars pulling in, blocking right. traffic, sitting there going in and buying peaches or right. pecans right. or wine. 
Right. But she has a public road, and it only interferes with her property, and the, she has a parking lot on her property. And my whole deal is not what you want to do, or her peaches, right, or the pecans, right. It's that you have to go through somebody else's property to do your business. But, but wouldn't I? Wouldn't if whatever business I have, wouldn't I have to go to the city of Milton and say, I need a business license to do this? Not, not an AG one. Really? Okay. You have the right. Robin has said it. Well, so I listen mean, to what she says. And um, you do. If you have a business. I mean, even an AG1, you need an ta occupational tax right, license, but that doesn't dictate zoning or use. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I check for uses if it's not, but. Because I think, because I have a, we have a home-based business. We have a consulting business, IT consulting. That's our Right, really, so you I, have an occupational tax We have an occupational mm -hmm. business license that I had to get from the city mill, and I have a plaque. I had to uh, uh, describe what our business was and whether we had employees or not, and I had to fill this out, and then based on that, all the statistics, they told me a fee that I paid annually. Mm -hmm. And I guess my question is, if we ever had any type of business that had any type of retail traffic, whether it was a hair salon that brought in people getting their hair cut, I'd have to denote that to the city when I'm applying for my license, and they could say, no, 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 you're in a subdivision, you can't have a great clips there. It's just, we're not going to allow that because your neighbors aren't going to allow that. So I guess I'm just having a, I'm trying to understand um, how we're commingling these when we're just saying, let's forget there's a winery. All we're trying to do is AG1 because that's all that's on the table today. Yeah, in, in I, I, I tend to agree with you on that. Um, I think more AG1, my personal opinion, is better. Uh, whether the Board of Zoning and Appeals, you know, sides with you or not, it's really their opinion. Uh, but this has been a horse farm, right? This right. has been a horse farm. You have horses on it. Right. Uh, it seems to make sense point. that everywhere around it is AG1, regardless of what you want to do with it in the future, is your business. So um, I tend to I, I, think, I think, I mean, Charlie is saying letters from the neighbors. Yeah, I think that's, that's reasonable. That's where I'm at. Yeah, 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 I'm willing, totally and willing that, to. And that's, that's an easy ask. It's yeah. not. You already said that they were pretty agreeable, amenable, so yeah. get the letters. Yeah. 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 Fine. Yeah. Right, good point. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's make a motion to the planning commission. Well, we don't need a, a, I mean, a motion. What's our recommendation? We just need a recommendation. So. All right, you make it. Well, um, so the recommendation would be to get those letters. Um, I, would, I would also ask the neighbors, do, do they want to be in AG1 track? Right. And I, I would say... Are there I would, tax benefits to AG1 over a cup, you think? There can be. Yeah, it's there right. could be. Yeah, I think. I'm sorry, I was making tax sure benefits to AG1 over Property cup. Tax benefits of AG1 over. I cup. can't really speak yeah, to that. Really yeah, I can't that. either. I'm not sure. I, that's, that's, the that's out of my <laughs> purview. Messy. I think if you got a letter saying <laughs> yes, I agree. Be city yeah. attorney. Full we'll stop. Um, let's, let's finish our recommendation. Yeah. So I, I I think the best thing to do would get the letters. I'd ask the neighbors if that's what they want, um, be, because I think the planning commission is going to look at this from a you know, they probably want to do all versus just one. I mean, to me, there's got to be some consistency um, because there is that private road. To me, right. it wouldn't make sense. So um, I think if all the neighbors are all on board, to me, I'd go with that and let them see what sort of decision that they make. Um, to, to me, it's too confusing, and I think as a commission, they can have a discussion, the all versus none versus, you They've know. already allowed one of the neighbors. Yeah, which I think that's a problem in itself, but it let, the, that's something they have to rectify. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I don't know what the answer is to that, but I think they have to look at all of that and right. make a decision either way. And Any, I think, I think this... this Courtesy hearing was about um, rezoning to AG1 and then having the accessory structure um, in front of the house. Should, are there oh. two recommendations or just one? Or was that you... before? Is the is that well, that's a what we call a concurrent variance that it goes along? So let's just say he wasn't rezoning and he just needed the variance. He would be before you as a courtesy review the on the variance well. section as well. So if you want to make comment on that, you can. Um, that would be helpful to the planning commission as well. Just aside from the use issue, what you think about the structure in front well, of the house. Well, you know how I am about setting precedent? And we've set the precedent that we've allowed accessory structures to be in front. So I would tell the uh, Planning Commission we have done that numerous times. 
and we've set a precedent and we should give you the same rights that we've given others. Thank you. You got a pretty piece of property. Those buildings look great. Yeah. Well, that was the idea is to kind of keep them the same so that it doesn't yep. look like an accessory function. Yeah, so, no, they're, so they look good. This particular instance, it suits. Yeah, I know it works. It, okay. it definitely works with the, the property. Okay. Definitely. So, I mean, I'd be amenable to that as well. Cause I think it does, you know, it adds, it, it, it fits with the AG1, which you're going right. for. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> that look. <laughs> Creating a new category called mid-century modern. Mo mid-century, no, mid-century farmhouse. So we're farmhouse. trying to create the whole if, if farmhouse, I, if I modern could, farmhouse. If I could say, I think we got a recommendation. We've got two other cases that have been waiting yes, a right. long time, so we need to. Yeah, so. I thought that thank first you, guy took long. Good luck. Good luck with that. And, uh. Hopefully you're successful. Yeah. Hey, staff, you, you're real clear on what we ended up at. Correct, yes. And, and it's yep. it's um, the letters, but it's also should this not be all AG1 and not leave it CUP? Go on, I mean, yeah. That's what Laura's saying is it's, it's an odd thing to have one lot beside him. He's got three or four lots, and then all of a sudden there's only four or five left. So... I would want the recommendation to have Planning Commission look at making all of them AG and knocking out that private street and the gate and all that stuff to make them all AG. And then they're all consistent. If they give him letters, and this I'm tying into Reed here, if they say, okay, we're all good with this, why wouldn't you do what Reed brought up and let them all in this hassle get made AG1? And okay. so I'd like Planning Commission to look at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, be curious to see what they come up with. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck. Very good. Really Thanks. becoming the equine community. Their eggs. <laughs> yeah, I got that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so we're moving into uh, final reviews. We have two this evening, and these are for final approval on structures um, that are going to be built. So the first case is 875 Mayfield Road for a medical office. If the applicant can come forward, state your name and address. Uh, thank you. My name is Mike Hopkins. I'm architect for the medical buildings. Uh, you need home personal address, business address? Yeah, your own address or your business address. Business address is 2653 Sharondale Circle, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, like I said, I'm the architect for the two medical office buildings at 875 Mayfield, which is the southeast corner of Mayfield and Charlotte. Um, we're going to have a corner plaza. You guys may be familiar with the site plans that have already been submitted. And we have an office building that fronts Charlotte Avenue. That's going to be an internal medicine practice with uh, three doctors. It faces the library, and the design intent was to reflect some of the architecture of the library with the board and batten siding and the coloring and the uh, paired column materials facing Charlotte Avenue. Uh, we're also going to have these four corner bays that are clad in granite that's recycled from the house that's currently on the, the site uh, what, that's going to be demolished. We're going to reuse that granite on those four corner bays. And we have two clabbered bays at the north and south ends of that building that will pick up on the gray color from the granite. The building that faces Mayfield Avenue is gonna have two tenants in it. There's gonna be a cardiologist in one side, and the other side is gonna be a medical timeshare where they have different specialists coming in during the week. Hmm. Uh, that building is also board and batten. We're gonna use a different coloring on the board and batten, a sage green. And there are also two bays that face to the north that are, that are going to mimic exactly the north and south bays on the Charlotte Avenue building to tie those two buildings together visually. And all the trim colors will be the same. The window sash colors will be the same in both buildings to tie them together. I have color samples. Uh, I think you guys have the building elevations. Two. Let's see if these can, I don't know if these will show up. Yeah, I think you'll just have to show it to them physically. That's show. not going to Okay. So you, the, you can go up after you explain. Just show it to them up okay. close after you explain it. So the existing structure that's there that's going to be demolished, we're going to reuse this granite on the corner bays. Uh, the shingle color is a, is a Williamsburg gray. It's, it's pretty neutral gray, architectural shingles. 
the we're going to use colors that are in the Sherwin Williams historical collection. Uh, the main body of the Charlotte Avenue building is a white and off white. All the trim on both buildings is going to be the off white color. The clabbered bays on the north that face north and south are going to have a gray clabbered, light gray clabbered. The main body of the Mayfield building is going to be a sage green. And the window sashes, just the area around the glass, is going to be a, a dark brown. Happy okay, I'd like everybody else to ring in if you have anything. I have a lot on this one. Oh, boy. And I have spent an hour and a half with the city's architect today okay. on this one. And, uh, and we have some issues for staff to look into where the demo we did last summer uh, has not been carried out. The requirements of that demo have not been done yet. So there's a good bit of issues here. Is that the stone? Yes. Yeah, so the, I was trying to remember, was that the, uh, they were going to reuse the stone pavers or were they going to implement it into the, incorporate it into the building? Well, first, the applicant was required to measure the house put a booklet together and uh, give us all the dimensions of this historic house and um, uh, give us the size, give us a plan in writing on how they were going to reuse the stone, which you're so, sort of doing here now. And none of the requirements have been done from the summer zoning. And Bob would like to have that done. He couldn't be here tonight. And so... Staff needs to look at the requirements in the zoning of the demolition of last summer and complete that work. Okay? And then um, we'd also like to remind staff and all of us that that color palette should be in the presentation so that we have it before the meeting. Um, we, Bob and I didn't have the colors and we didn't have any idea what the paint colors were going to be because it's not in the submission. It used to be, if you all will remember, especially the townhouses around here, we have the roof color, we have all the paint colors, and everything is in the submission, and that needs to be in the submission, not just held up before us. And we'd like to see it before these meetings. Yes, sir. I, I, uh, tonight's been a whole lot of things where we're being handed things late and, and not organized and surveys weren't in packages and I would like to discuss this in new business at the end of the meeting so next um, we've got some dormer issues we'd like to see we think we have way too much roof here um, for these pretty medical buildings we don't love the barn door we know what you're trying to do there and say okay I'm in Milton but Milton's old historic retail buildings didn't necessarily have a a salute to barn doors and we're not sure the barn doors work with the buildings and we're very sensitive because this is on an incredibly important corner for the next 50 years every resident of Milton will be looking at these and driving by them it's a killer location these should be great investments because they'll always have high visibility I having done 800,000 square feet of retail in my career, want to see where the signs are going. I can't believe these doctors aren't going to want to have some signs. And signs, there's no telling us where the signage goes. And we've been very touchy in downtown Crabapple here with where all the signage goes on the Adam Orkin buildings. So we don't know where the signage is going. We've got some dormer issues. And to get right to the point, my request and that of the city architect is to defer this a month for you to have time to get with Bob and solve a lot of these problems. I think you got a great development. We like that the parking's internal mm -hmm. and turned inward. So you're doing the majority of things, but I, for one, this morning said I can't approve this and we'll fight this. There's too many unknowns here. We don't. I didn't have paint colors. I didn't have window colors. Are they black windows? Are they white windows? What were the colors? Uh, we'd like to see a couple more dormers. This is a massive amount of roofing that doesn't have anything on it. The, we like these dormers. I think Bob had talked to you about doing those earlier. And so it's just not quite where it needs to be. We want to have the booklet. Today, today, I don't think this would get approved for demolition in the mood we're in that you know, Crabapple's being finished downtown. 
and the mood might be to protect this building and add some more buildings to it because it's an incredibly important. You were here for the earlier meeting, Certainly. but we're not letting that demo happen. So we would like to get back to the documentation. I know Jeff is listening, president of the Historical Society, and we'd like to put that in our archives of what was there, photographs, the size of the building, the stone, and pictures of all four sides. That was required. It's never been done in the, in the demolition of last summer. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just, uh, when I reached out to Bob this morning, I said, I, I can't, Go for this. I'm gonna, and I wanted his thoughts and support, um, which I have. And um, so these are the things he'd like to accomplish with you over the next 30 days. Thank you. I'll just throw in my two cents. Maybe this will help. Maybe it won't. Um, this is a. It is a incredibly important corner of our community. We focused on. There's been a lot of discussion around it. This just looks like one of the vet clinics that we've approved in North Milton. You know, all over Milton. I first saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I almost wish it was a two-story building a little bit. had a little bit more character. I, I agree with Charlie on the, uh, the too much roof. It's like too much, too much roof. But this is kind of like everything else. You've got a great opportunity to make something really, really, really cool here. Um, I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel like this. Um, I'm not an architect or a designer. I'll leave that to other people. But um, my office is in a building in downtown Crabapple just like this. And... It doesn't necessarily feel as substantial as some of the other buildings that are being built. So I don't know what that means. That's just my two cents. And if you haven't already, um, Sunday, I, I just, to get my thoughts better on this, I went out to um, the office park where Reed's office is. What's that called? Brayburn Village. Um, right there at Birmingham Highway. And... They're smaller massing, and if you look at them, whoever did it did a fabulous job. The ends have activity, the fronts, the backs, the sides, the roof lines change, and uh, not much, you gotta buy the roofing anyway, but if some more action could be happening on these buildings, much like the office park I'm describing. I went over there and, it, and stood and looked at every building and just saw so much more architecture. And again, this is a, these buildings, 50 years, they'll probably be torn down, something bigger, maybe a 10 story, who knows. Yeah. Um, but it, these need to be better to be in the community right now. Yeah, I, do, I do agree with Reed, though, that maybe a two story look or a varied look might be a little bit better. Um, to me, it starts looking like all the medical office in. parks. Like, you're gonna I think just, you're going to need to take your dog in here. Yeah, it's like, ee, I don't know about that. <laughs> not not for I, that historic area. Yeah. I, I, I think you... I, I don't have anything to add. I do agree with you. It's a bit generic. Yeah. That was, yeah. I think the applicant was directed by the city's architect to work toward one stories, but I think the board is saying they might be open to two stories. Um, if you want to do one, that's fine. Um, I think they're saying if you want to do two, they're open to that. Um, but just take a month on a next 50 year corner and get with Bob and I would are happy to meet with you. We talked about it this morning, whenever you want to meet and um, incorporate what the board said and uh, just make this an award-winning corner is what we want to do. A busy one. So um, I think somebody needs to make a motion for deferral. Yes. I'd make the motion um, if I haven't lost which case this is. This is final review, 875 Mayfield Road. Okay, I'd make that motion that we defer for one month and ask the applicant to spend some time with the city's architect and try to incorporate many of the ideas. And also during that month, complete the requirements of the demolition permit that you received last summer. Because that has not been, been Jeff, Jeff seconds. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, our last item is final review for 3170 Web Road. The applicant can come forward, state your name and address. Hey, I am Bobbitt with Piedmont Residential. I'm Bobbitt. Um, address 285 Parkway 575, Woodstock, Georgia. So, this site is going to be at the corner of Webb Road and Deerfield Parkway. I believe you guys should all have a packet. Um, so, what we're going for today is um, approval for our elevations of our units 11 through 18 that will be facing Webb Road. All the elevations in this plan have the paint schemes of what the color they're actually going to be with the actual Sherwin Williams name and number, but these are the actual colors that they will be. Uh, we have the 2D, 2D renderings. We have the 3D renderings. We have Street View 3D renderings. And also the site plan as you work your way through the packet. Hey, um, I'm going to be Charlie on this one. <laughs> um, Good. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll go back through the list of, you know, this is an area I've, you know, spent a lot of time, worked with. Um, I... I Personally, the look wasn't working for me. Um, the materials, the colors, uh, just that's also a busy corner. Um, and I, I didn't see, um, to me, uh, the aerial view of what's next right across the street and what's here, to me, it's real different. And... Um, it, it's not consistent with what's already um, on Deerfield as far as kind of look and feel across the street. Um, so I, it's, I've, got, I've got problems with it, frankly, just because, you know, our big deal has always been area, and I feel like we're not really consistent there. Um, and that's kind of a big deal for me is to try and, maintain some consistency um, with the looks and so what material you're suggesting what do you think is the colors or the I, design, I think the fronts the elevations the I, way the doors are I think the colors I think the some of the stone pops in that to me it just it uh, it just looked out of place um, I think front porches would be better like what do you what do you think would be let me ring in on front porches um, in a couple. Can I? Are you done? Are you done? Sorry, for Laura, I just kind of completely. Yeah, cut yeah, you yeah. Off. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, typically for a final review, when we're already in an area that's already, you know, and, and I, I will actually mention this for now down for Crabapple. I think it's the same thing. Aerial shots of what's already there, of, you know, what's across the street, what's already there as part of the package, that's kind of been an expectation we've had if we do a final review. And also to bring in light fixtures, to bring in materials, all of the, those things. I don't really see any of that. Um, I have materials here. I was just going by what Mr. Roberts said earlier about not wanting to see things held up. So Yeah. I, they should have been in the package. We, we shouldn't have to hold things up at the meeting. It should be in the package. My paint what I was saying earlier on that other case. I want to ring in with what uh, Laura said. Um, one of my, I've got eight or ten issues here. Um, and I, everything she said, I was going to say, so I agree with her. Um, if you look at the back of the book and you look at the uh, rendering, um, I would want to see these dormers taken off. And are, there, are, there, are there rooms and livable space on that fourth floor? No, sir. So uh, they're already too tall for this location at three stories, but that's fine. But there's no reason to make this one look like a four-story. So you got two or three with those dormers way up there that make this a four-story building. 
I'd like to see those dormers off and it be a three-story. That'll save you money, and it doesn't add anything to the design. These architects think it adds anything. We think, um, and eventually I'm going to make a motion, or hopefully I can get a second, to defer this so you can keep working on it with us for a month. So those would come off. There's a lot of proportions on whoever drew this that don't work. Um, I'm a builder. Um, I'm building $100 million a year, and uh, none of these proportions are really working on some of these pictures because there's no beam in this porch holding up these, these columns. I mean, this can't be built this way. There's got to be a beam in here to hold up these columns. And I don't like these porches because when you look at them to the side, there's a notch in you the wall exposed beam or what do you no no just there's got to be some structure up yeah, in there an lvl uh that'll be covered by that's a fascia okay, if there's enough room there the the worst ones are um these proportions where if you get over to elevation b um the rear or front uh let's see where it see it doesn't say um, elevation b um, yeah, I, I, I guess. <laughs> uh, let me finish with this porch. I'm sorry. It's okay. way too high, and when the roof line is running up underneath the second floor window, we don't think that's good architecture in Milton. We'd like you to look at that, and Bob can talk more about it. But these columns are way too tall, we think, and it's sitting way up high, and it's pushed up under the window which is not Milton architecture or cutesy architecture, whatever you want to call it. And so we see a lot of things. The banding in some of the locations highlights four-story buildings um, and makes it look like a four-story. There's one of the plans. Um, and then last is the materials are really choppy in some of these where there's three and four materials per floor. Um, this one where you've got siding, then you jump up to board and batten, and then you jump up to shingles. That building will look softer, and none of this is going to cost you any money because you're putting a skin on it. If this was cleaned up a little bit, where maybe there's two floors of board and batten, and then a floor of shingles, two floors of siding, and then a floor, uh, a level of shingles at the top, this would start looking softer, and it just, it just needs some work. Architecturally, it needs work. I think for me, I just, this look here, these bump, it, it just, to me, it's just, it, it doesn't look right. I mean. The bump outs were staff recommendation by Bob himself, so yeah, that's why. I'm, not, I'm not liking it, frankly. I think it, it, it when, the when you look at the neighborhood across the street, I mean, they did a nice job on those, on that entry. Um, I know Tell those, me. those are townhouses, is but. This oh, is, about, is this the bump out you're talking about? No, on the front, this. The staggered. Which plan is that? Plan C. God, they're all fairly similar. I, I, yeah, I, I, for me, a duplex would be like entry off the side or something where maybe you had a porch, which is what they do actually across the street. Is they have these nice side entries, and I think actually that from the street looks very appealing. This to me does not. I mean, it really just from a streetscape perspective just doesn't. Um, what they've done across the street at the green looks, you know, I think they did a really good job with building those townhouses to have a nice appeal from the street. And I think, you know, if we're going to put new stuff in, then we got to do the same thing. And I'm just not seeing this here at all. Um, I, I feel like I haven't even had a chance to review this before we got to a final review. Um, it's, yeah, it's. I think. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Not hurt mine. We've been at this with Bob and Robin since October, so I'm ready. And and um, let's. I'm I'm going to make a motion on. Do we need to ask. The, there's no public here. Do we need to ask the public? Uh, we can. If there's, is there any public comment? Okay. Oh. So I would make a motion. Um, to um, postpone for 30 days um, and have you get with Bob. 
we really spent more than two hours on this today on these two cases and uh, had a lengthy discussion. So he knows where I'm coming from. Laura uh, is where we are, and you could bring in with Bob, too. Yeah, I can. And let's see if Killer Corner, you've got something really great with this zoning to get duplexes. We just really want them to be leading edge, as we said to the other applicant, on the, his corner at Charlotte and Mayfield. These We can't let these corners not be fantastic. And we're not asking you to spend a lot any more money. You still got to put a skin on it. We'd, we would like to see these color palette a little better. The brown, I don't love the brown. And um, you want neutrals? Uh, yeah, more Milton. Mm -hmm. We're beginning to talk about around town with those that are interested in the Milton brand and Milton look. It kind of evolved for ten or fifteen years, but it's pretty strong. Our housing prices have gone through the roof. And um, we just really want to hang on to that Milton brand. Yeah, and with the zoning, we are trying to get that. Uh, people that want to live in Milton, they can't afford it. We're trying to get them here with this product. But we're not going to get into price point because that's you, the builder, and that's not our area. Yep. It's just the architecture design review board. Right. We're, we're here to make sure we, oh, I, I we keep consistency in the neighborhood because there's people already there who are established and they want the same nice looking feel for their sure. for, for their neighborhood. We have to get the apartment complex that's running there behind us to come. But we the can't here, here's the magic. We can't go back and fix what we didn't have any say in. But what we can do is make sure we're constantly lifting up anything that's new. And I did mention those dormers. I don't want to see four, uh, some of these as four story buildings. And then I think you ought to either have gables or hips, but mixing hip roof with gables really kind of breaks up the neighborhood and the flow of the street. You have four hip roofs? Well, you've got hip roofs. I, I'm just I asking. We were told no hip roofs before we came yeah, here Yeah, Bob today. had talked about not having hip so, roofs. Yeah, well, Bob doesn't like the hips. I'm open to hips or not, but not mixing them in a very tight, dense, and I'm a multifamily builder, so we're wanting everything to soften and flow, and so... I would get rid of the hip roof and those high dormers and do everything with gables and gable vents and all the cute things that everybody loves about Milton and help us reinforce what Bob and I have started call, calling the Milton brand. And um, so that's what I'd like to see. And then, um, you know, I'd really like for we look at these materials. If you can do two floors of a material and then a third floor accent shingles or something, these buildings will soften and there won't be so much. There's one building that actually has four floors of different materials. Yeah. I, I think if you look right down here in these townhomes, the look and feel, something like that, that's kind of what, that's, I think you got to go with something to that effect, not the tons of different material. To me, this looks like stuff we're trying to get away from. I mean, that's just my opinion. So um, and I'm touchy about how this hangs out here and you've notched out this entry and so part of the Milton brand is a porch with a couple of chairs on it and they decorate it with pumpkins for the holidays and it's a porch and you don't have a porch on these units um, you just got a hole in the building where you go into two doors I just that's weird. and so the porch isn't adding anything and again Laura mentioned you go through this neighborhood over here all these porches are decorated and people are sitting out on the porches and waving at each other. And so I'd like to see these porches more Milton-like. Um, so, um, Yeah, I think basically instead of this, I think this being can't port, see I can't. You know, in, instead of kind of this two-door thing here, to me, like porch entry one, two, that way to me looks just more balanced. Um, versus this, and then gets into the whole porch thing, which is what they have across the street. They have the entry porch, and I think then you start looking at some consistency. There are duplexes across the street? Those are townhomes, but... I'll show you. You can do duplexes very similar to that.
Is there a difference between a duplex and a garden home or just two t attached products? Is there a difference? Um, Never heard of a difference. Not really. <laughs> no, there's these really no big, difference these, except. Not, they can't see because they're seeing these porches. Except they're trying to get porch. as much density. So the narrower they get exactly. a duplex when it's a 28-foot townhome. What, what's the width of 46 these? feet wide by 61 feet deep. These are 26 wide, and there's two houses in there? Are you just stacking a staircase on top of one? Is that what you're doing? So you imagine a townhome's like this? We're doing like this. So you have half, half the first floor is one unit, the other half is the other unit, and then it's stacked going up. Yeah. So pretty narrow to get done the Milton look. Yeah. And that's the challenge we're going to tell you is that, you know, we're not happy with this look. And, um, you know, because it is so tough to do what you're doing in 26 feet um, and get a porch look and it, it, it just needs some work and I'm happy to meet with you, you know love to meet with you because I called Bob this morning and I said I'm going to make a scene tonight this is not going to get approved I hope I can convince six other votes um, to, to could not do this um, and Bob got on the computer he said yeah no we let this get by us there's some issues here and he, he acknowledged he'd been meeting with you, but it just didn't end up where he thought it was going to end up. And I can't speak for him. He'll tell you what he wants to tell you. Rick, but, increase your cost too much? Yeah. Rick would increase your cost too much? It increases cost, but like I said, I mean, we're, you know, we want it, we want it to be the Milton look, but, you know, we'll do what we need to do. I've got a motion on the floor, I think. Yeah. And I'm happy to come with Bob, and I've said, let's, Get with you, so and we're happy to do that whenever you give want. Give me your email address, and we can set up a time. And I and I will as well because okay. I'm familiar with that area. Like so I said, we've been at this since October, so that. we'd love to put some closure to it, just so we can start. Because it would be probably next month. We're we're submitting for final plat, so we well, want to have all this wrapped up. So once we get final plat, we can start building. Here's the difference with me: it won't take us six hours, and you won't be three months. Because I'm like you; I got to make something happen every day. Yeah. People get a salary every week, don't have the motivation as much as you and I do. And these are real simple fixes, and it's no more money. Um, well, I, for one, wouldn't ask you to put brick on it because you don't have to, and that costs bricks four, three times as I much. I think brick masons are unicorns right now, so if you can Good find materials. me a brick mason, climb well, me it's <laughs> not that. It's just you've got a cost point you want to hit here. What do you, what's your selling price? We want to start base house. In the high fours per house, how many per, you, per unit? Yeah, per not per building, but no, per, per unit. unit. And and how many square feet is that? What is it, Sharon? Oh. Woo! Man, of costs going through the roof. <laughs> Eighteen hundred feet for four hundred thousand dollars. It's just insane where costs are gone. Well, That's I want to help you get it done. I have a theory. I want everything. Trashy, unless it's historic, torn down, and I'm all about giving demo permits, and I'm all about seeing land, un, unused land, get built on, and creating a bigger and bigger, bigger tax base. So you got, I don't know how much, four hundred thousand times four million is ten. So you got uh, eight million in tax base here. So let's get it built. It just needs more. We're going to hear this over and over now because we've actually uh, are working on hiring an ad agency to help with the Milton brand. So we could give, here's what I want to do, and I've agreed to pay for it. We're going to do a brand book where we can give that to you, the builder, and then you know, and all this conversation and three months talking to everybody, and Bob and I are going to work on a brand book, and we're going to show you some porches, like Laura said. We're going to show you some great design, like I told the other medical building guy, go look at Reed's office park, and then we can... Better to find the brand, and you'll spend less worry, less time. No more money, right? Hitting the brand. All right. So, did you make a motion? I made a motion. Okay. Is there a second on the motion? No second. <laughs> all right. So, all in favor of deferral for a month? Aye. 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 <coughs> okay. And I can right. meet anytime you want to meet. Bob's hard to get because he's a busy, busy man. So, work, get Bob set up. And I'll meet meet when he How wants to meet. All right. Uh, is there any new business? My new business is our submissions, Robin, are going downhill and getting harder and harder. Um, 
the house with the pool and the variance was the worst package I've ever seen. It was bad. And yet she it was, was sitting on their survey, and it wasn't given to us in our package. So I, I would... Well, he, he just bought it with him. So. Okay. Well, but... I think what, uh, what he's saying is we just need to ask for more information up front for your submittal. So. You we, we have a checklist that we developed two years ago, two or three years ago, actually, probably three years ago. <laughs> I don't know. I have to think. Um, and that checklist, Thank you. We, need to, we need to use that and make sure they're submitting all of that because we don't really want to see it unless they've got the stuff in the checklist. Um, because it 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 wastes everybody's time unless we know what's there, um, and if I can't make a decision, like Charlie said, I don't want to vote on it, and then then we we delay them. Um, so I really think we need to pull that checklist back out. Um, Bob should have a copy. If not, I might have a copy in my file of it. But it was fairly comprehensive. Yeah, we um, have it. We have it. Well, so. Okay. We'll make sure um, tighten up, especially and also the building. Submittal. You just need to give them that, Robin. I I, I mean, we do. We give it to well, them, but let, I think let me it's finish a, if I could. Okay. I work in ten or fifteen municipalities, and I would be thrown out of Alpharetta, out of Peachtree Corners, if I came in with the packages we're seeing. Most of them. I made a comment when the fire station came in, um, whether it was Cooper Carey or whoever did it. It was the most fantastic package I'd ever seen and answered every question and it just got a yes immediately because the package was so good. Yeah. What we're telling you to do will really help the applicant and you need to tell them maybe put a paragraph above here. If you come in with all this done, you will have a better day <laughs> in, in hearings than you're going to have, oh, let me get this. Let me put my phone down here. Let me, and it just takes more hours. And last, I want to quote Laura from uh, two years ago. So many things got approved, but they got built different than she thought they were going to be because nothing's in the record. No paint colors. When they hold that up, that's not in the record. And I don't want paint colors in this book where he said, it's Sherman Williams White. I want to see a ch paint chip, not just the words, because I don't know what the words mean, and I don't have a Sherman Williams paint book with me every night. So this is just not being done. You don't have to do any work. Just give them the checklist. I'd like to see the checklist. I'm that. sorry, I can't hear you. Can you get close? I'd like to see a copy of the checklist. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, have it. We, we do have a checklist, but we literally have to uh, chase every applicant to get everything. They most of the time just... And just don't it send it to us. Well, we... We, yeah, but we, we put together a checklist. The bo Actually, the board did with Bob, and this was three or four years ago, and said, look, if you don't, for demolitions, we want you to do da-da-da-da-da. For final reviews, da-da-da-da-da. For courtesy review, we want this. And if you don't come in, then we're not going to look at it. That's, is that the one? Right. That's it. Then, then you just say you're then not going to submit it. We're not doing it. <laughs> just type in capital letters on there. If this isn't all complete, yeah, yeah this is it. Then, then yes, it will yes. not be sent. Yeah. You won't so be heard. I, I Give that to Lee. And let me tell you what's going to happen. Diane, thank you. What's going to happen is. All these engineers and developers and a lot of the people that are here a lot of the time are going to see that happen one time. Then they're going, uh-oh, they're really enforcing what we should be getting. And we shouldn't be making decisions um, as we see pictures on the screen. We should have had these to look at three days ahead of time to make valid decisions. Those saying complete submittals won't be accepted. Yeah, and it, it's... To, to me, it's not it's not fair for applicants that do their work, and then other folks come in and they haven't done you know a darn thing. It's like, well, that doesn't seem quite fair to the folks that spend a lot of time and effort doing their homework. But I totally agree. It's and some people that have come before us numerous times just do hardly anything, and they trade on the fact we all know them, and it's so and so and so. I won't use any names, and I'm such and such, and they kind of wing it all through the meeting. Well. We're booming and we're growing, and one more time, uh, 
precedent is critical. If we do something for one, we're going to have to do it for others. And I've told you all, I'm an authority on that because I've sued five municipalities in federal court and won. If they set a precedent and they do it for one, I'm going to get it too. And I made that record tonight to that man that, hey, you're, we've done it. we put buildings, we've got these codes, but we're not sticking to them and we're given variances, mm -hmm. which it's the board's pleasure. But I'm all about having packages that if when we do it and three years later, the neighbor calls and says it's not right, to heat, you know, we can go to our files and find the paint colors, the architectural renderings, and everything like we should. Hey, Robin, it may be helpful uh, just to have maybe an example of a well-put-together packet, maybe. Maybe there's not, maybe that doesn't exist. Well, I mean, there is. I think there's it's a several. matter of just monitoring what comes in and then just um, laying down the line. It's like we won't accept it. Um, I think it is kind of like training a child in a sense, you know. Yeah, I mean, if I was submitting one of these. Expectation, you know, this True. is our expectation and we have to be True. consistent. So I apologize that we've kind of not made that happen for um, you all and make your job easier. So we definitely will. No, apologies. Um, there are people who have come in with good packages. That's yeah. not, you know. I think it will move more quickly. You guys won't be here so late. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and we hey, can I had really, three meetings last week, so hey. We can <laughs> make better decisions. We can, um, early when I was first on the board, Laura, you brought up a lot of things that happened in that area that didn't happen like you th thought they were going to happen. Well, so we have to document our file, and that's just good business. And then the better package we, we have, we should be going, wow, this is great work, and we, we all like it, versus... If you're getting letters, you do this, or you CUP. I mean, what's the, you know, all this we're doing is just a waste of our time. And, yeah, and, well, and then it gives, and like you said, people, they start getting lazy and not doing their job because they think they can get away with it, which um, I've seen that happen too. But um, I, know the, I know the ones who come prepared, you know, it is a lot easier for us to, you understand what they're doing and, and move through it. Um, not that, you know, I mean, we're here to volunteer and speak for the public, so that's our job. Making sure that people get what they want. Developers, and I've done it over and over. Anything I say bad about developers, I've done it. Seriously. And the less we have to commit to, the more flexibility we can do as we start building them and we want to change it to purple, that's we true. can. Our buyer says we paint it pink. Uh, yeah, I can because I didn't. They didn't tie me to paint colors when we approved it, and um, I know you're doing tons of work. At Bob and I talked about all that's going on with um, with your new plan and uh, the comp plan, and that's all just part of what's making us great. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. And I think board is very flexible, and you we all work with in all you all especially work with everybody and try to make them happy. Um, but there's just certain places we got to draw the line. I was so happy that you were in there on these duplexes because I, 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 I called Jeff. Jeff, you still there? I sure am. I said, I said Jeff, I'm going to be such a bad boy on two or three of these. Will you take the lead on the demolition? And he said, absolutely. I've already agreed. I, I was really planning on that. So it's just not one of us doing it. So Jeff took the lead on not tearing down that building. You took the lead on that. And uh, we were all definitely in agreement on where we were. And that's great because these next few years with the pressure on growth, it's, every builder it's uh, crazy. downtown slowing down, everybody went, whoa, COVID's down here and maybe the bars aren't so great. Let's move back to suburbia. Yeah, exactly. And everybody's running back to suburbia and no place is better than Milton. So we really got... You know, like Bob said, he was the, he's holding back the flood of bad work. Yeah, um, we have so, to be careful. <laughs> thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Um, okay, is there any old business? <clears throat> We're adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank appreciate, you. appreciate all your help, everyone, in, including yeah, it was a great meeting. Robin and Suba. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, well, Very good meeting. We'll work on.